It's Julia. That's me. Hey, Dealy Boppers, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 2, otherwise known as Escape from, like, the dungeon of this weird mad wizard who's, like, the cousin of, of like, the guy from Saw or something. I swear, it's just, it's so, it's so creepy. This, this whole dungeon. We have to get out. We have to escape. But there's a nice library and I'm stealing all the books. It's literally taking up almost my entire inventory. But I'm stealing all the books. But like, okay, so... I'm still looking for a key. And I don't know where it is. But I'm looking for a key to like some of the doors around this place. And I feel like I'm glad. Okay, I've got I've got Emoin searching for for traps, which I'm glad because I feel like this just it feels like a place rife with traps. Oh my gosh. Okay, these are Dorikar, which are like evil underdark dwarves. So I'm willing to bet this is not about to go well. Be alert, laddies, we've got company. Ho, prisoners. <laughs> you've come to the wrong place. You've come to the throng, throng place. I tell you true, Ilric and his boys will stop you. Oh, but I knew where this place was. I have no quarrel with you, Jurgar. That's weird. I've never seen the word the abbreviated with an apostrophe and turned into a contraction with with the word following it. Suffice to say, this place is your doom. By the time the master returns, you shall be dead and we shall be rewarded. Adam lads, no mercy. Shit. Uh well then, I guess we're fighting Dorigar. All right, well then, it's a good thing I have magic missile. Yes. Like, several times over. I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna open with that. And like summon a spider. I feel like that is, I feel like that's just like a really awesome way to, to continue. Oh shit, this is, this combat's starting to look like it's a little bit more than I can chew it. I think it's a little bit more than I can chew, I feel like it's a little bit more than I was preparing myself to chew maybe? Alright. I've, I feel like always keeping an archer on any spellcaster is is a good idea. That way, when they're spellcasting, if you can sort of catch them while they're doing it, you can you can interrupt them and maybe they won't finish. What is it? I feel like maybe. Maybe a magic missile at that mage would not be inappropriate. Oh! Whoa! Damn. Look at that. She needs she needs a little bit of of like of TLC. So does she holy She needs this more than Leandra does. Oh, are you kidding me? She has no no room for anything. It's all these books. So But it's like she just Leandra is obsessed, she must have the books. Speak. But like okay, so if she can get this potion of healing down fast enough, okay, yes. sweet. I can summon another spider because I think 
I know that that one's doing fine. I was gonna say I, I thought that, I thought that maybe they they killed mine. Well, no, let me keep let me keep that one fighting that because that one is is near death. I'm just gonna switch Minsk over to to using a bow and arrow and attacking this one over here. And I really feel like Emoen should be should be attacking the same mage. I feel like I feel like this character is not using any of her. No, I've got Emoen selected now. I feel like this character is not using any of her defensive spells like she could be. So I feel like she should be doing that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have her do that. She did like she down that like so super duper super duper quick. I'm so glad too. Cause like I was not feeling like having that character die. Is that? Oh my gosh, he's running. He's panicking and he's running away. I'm just gonna like I'm just gonna fire a chromatic orb at him and and he will die. Or not, like Emoen could could get him with with his bow. There's dwarves that attacked us. Okay. Kind of evil, I guess. So not surprised to be working for our captor. Oh, he does have quite the little setup. Yeah, he's got everything he needs for knives. Probably he has a lot of them. I'm going to have a couple of scars from this. Looks like you will too. As if I need another reminder, Leandra. I don't care what power this guy thinks he can tap in you. He's just sick to the core. We can't ever look back. Oh my gosh, what is it with like with Bioware games and what is it with Bioware games and and scars? Just like I feel like it started with Baldur's Gate, and just like ever since, just just scars and scars. Oh, they have armor, but like I can't take the armor because I'm carrying all these books. And I can't take the weapons because I'm carrying all these books. I can't take the shields because I'm carrying all these books. I can't take the potion because I'm carrying all these books. I'm beginning to question my priorities. Like maybe carrying books is not necessarily. The most important use of my storage space, but like, and I mean, true. When am I ever gonna read all these? But like, but like, it's so it's so interesting. Like, look, history of the Western Heartland. The history of the Western Heartlands is a history of endless battles and destroyed empires. In ancient times, these were the lands of the fallen kingdom of Ilafar and the lost kingdom of Man, and rumored Netheril. In more recent history, the land has been fertilized with blood and bone as forces from the empires of the sand surge northward. The evil peoples within Dragonsphere and the goblin marches filled forth, and mercenary companies moved to and fro in the service of one petty warlord after another. During recent battles, leveled the way in and threatened Daggerford. Even the time of troubles did not leave their desolate land unmarked. Vol himself perished. At Borskir Ridge. See relevance, stuff about that, and the waters it passes over have remained poisoned to this day. The cities of the Western Heartlands are strong, independent, and varied. They are also strongly motivated by trade and listen harder to the ringing of gold than the call of battle. But something else prospers in the open land freedom and opportunity. No nation lays claim on the Western Heartlands to land beyond that which their armies can control, and no warlord can make demands beyond the swing of his axe. Small holes and castles regularly spring up only to be knocked down by invading forces or abandoned after a generation or two. Lost dungeons and secret citadels lie scattered throughout the land and this rugged frontier presents more than enough opportunities for adventurers. See, there's so much useful information in, in these books right here. But I don't feel like they're going to sell for very much. And I don't necessarily think that I'm going to take the time to read all of these. Like, what is this? History of the Dead of Three. Knuckle Bones, Skull Bowling, and the Empty Throne. In the ages past, there was but one god of strife, death, and the dead. And he was known as Jurgle. 
Lord of the end of everything, Jurgle fomented and fed on the discord among mortals, and Powers are like, how can he be the Lord of the end of everything, and then suddenly, like, not be? Like, it says in the ages past, there was but one god of strife, death, and the dead, and it's like, but if that changes, like, then how are you the Lord of the end of everything? If, like, the portfolios change... I'm just gonna like dump all these books in here as just like a, a fuck you to him, to to my captor. It's just gonna be like, hey, look, I took all your books and I moved them over to the smithy and and dumped them all over the place uh, after I read one or two of them. I didn't have time for all of these, like the last march of the giants. Who's who's got time for that? The history of Waterdeep, I mean, like, it's got that nifty big huge dungeon under the city. Uh, what's it called? Undermountain, I think, is it? The history of the north. King Obald, orc ruler of the citadel of many eras. Oh, hey, like, this character shows up in some of the Driss novels, too. Whoa, that's interesting. Anyway, there's there's like some some like stuff that reaches out to some of the other Forgotten Realms stuff. I don't even know like when those books were being written as compared to like when this was or like so like when the character showed up as in the universe as a whole as opposed to like when they showed up in those particular books. But like history, there's so many books about the history of the Shadow. We couldn't read them. We couldn't even, like, touch a page on any of them because we knew that, like, as soon as we did, we'd have to read all of them. And there were literally, like, f what, 16 of those things or something like that? There's too many books on the history of Shadow. Sembia, who cares about Sembia? I don't even know where that is. Come to think of it, I don't even know where Shadow is. Who cares about Lurin? It's difficult to pronounce. I, once again, we're, we're just abandoning all books on the Shadow Deal. History of the Bell in the Depths. I mean, that sounds interesting, but like... Oh, oh my gosh. But like, who has time for, for all this? What, what is this? I feel like I, I want to just like hover over them. Gone to Gold, the Lost King. I mean, he's he's lost. Do you really need to know that much more? History of Dursper and Var. Just how to pronounce that would be good. History of the Vast. It's vast. Um, History of the Dales and the Elven Court. Oh my gosh. I feel like... This is like... It talks about like how the years are counted and stuff like that. I feel like the game, I feel like there's a place on it where if you, if you hover your mouse over it, like, it'll tell you what the month and the year are in the game. History of the Chosen Maestra, boring. History of Tether, boring. History of the North, there's so many of them. And I've, I've read a lot of those Driss novels, so... It's, it's not exactly like a lot of this information is like necessarily all that new as much as this like refreshing. I'm just like that huge of a nerd. Oh. What, what is this? History of the Moon Sea. History of the Shadow Dale. Oh my gosh, there's so many of them. History of the North Part 1. I can't, I can't believe how many how many history of the Shadow Dale there are. History of the Drow Part 2. The warlike Drow nature did not change when they escaped their surface foes during the descent. In fact, they immediately launched a series of wars to establish territories in the Underdark. They began by stealing and seizing dwarven magical items and using them against the dwarves, establishing an enmity that is still strong today. The Drow then fought among themselves, noble against noble. Priest against priestess for rule of their new uh, realm. This all-out war ended amid great magical explosions that brought down the roof of the largest dwarven cavern they had seized, Great Baron Den. The ceiling collapsed entirely, burying many drow, and 
the and the oh my gosh i lost where it went <clears throat> um let's see oh and shattered bearing may drow and the shattered dwarven cities the cavern now open to the sky became known as the great rift the surviving drow Nobles gathered what people, slaves, and equipment they could seize and fled into the Underdark in search of places to dwell. The scattering brought about the many rival self-interested cities where most drow live today. Interesting. Well, I now you know. The more you know. And, and oh, look, there's the history of the drow part one. We know very little of the Illithiri or elves of the south before this crucial event. Even then... They were known as dark elves for the hue of their skins. They dwelt in the jungles and hot forests of the south. A proud warlike culturally advanced, some sages of other elven people say decadent folk. The Illithiri attacked all neighbors, including other elven tribes. Their cruel raids and depredations ordered by warlike nobility and the clergy of their two cruel deities, Gondadar and Loth, forced elves, humans, dwarves, and others to ally against them. Defeated in a series of titanic magical battles, the Dark Elves fled into underground warrens they had earlier discovered. This event known as the descent marked the end of the drow as a surface drawing race. So I guess they were always purple. That's what it says here, but like other things say that like that like drow being purple was like for them following Loth or something. But like this says this says even before that, but anyway, I guess they were like they were super, super advanced and warlike and hated all the other elves and, and everyone, so... So they, they made war against everyone, but when you make war against everyone, no one likes you and, and people make war back against you and then you get banished. That's that's what happens. Uh, Alright, so that's the moral of that. And the moral of libraries is fuck that shit because... That uh, is just that is just far too many books to carry. I cannot. I absolutely can't. Will not deal with that many books. Uh, cause there's more important things to carry. Because like you can you can you need potions for your health. Otherwise otherwise you start dying and like you need shields and armor and like even if you're already wearing them like you you, you can sell that shit like. You'll get more money for that than you will for books. It's just common sense. And plus, like... I guess your, your inventory full. Is that you? Do I have you carrying all this shit, man? Oh. Are you carrying a quarter staff? Why are you carrying a regular quarter staff? No one pays anything for those. You get, like, zero gold pieces for that. So, don't. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, look, this chainmail is magical. And look, there's seeds or something. They look like acorns. Oh my gosh. Can I can I just pick this up and like give it to someone else? Yeah. What what is this chainmail? Do I have a spell of identify memorized mail the dead plus two? A mage can make an extremely effective assassin, as Varusta illustrated over 400 years ago. He would create skeleton warriors equipped with this enchanted armor and a powerful blade, and give their circlet of power to the target as a friendly gift. When the when the killing machine was through with its work, Varusta retrieved the equipment and started the entire process over. Oh my gosh. But, like, this is, this is uh, Chainmail Plus 2, so, like... Like the only two people in the party who can wear it are Leandra and Minsk and if if um if Leandra's wearing it, she can't cast any spells. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it to Minsk. That's why I've got, that's why she's got ghost armor, you know? That, that way she doesn't need any, any chainmail. She can just like, she can just use the, that spell and, and she'll be, and she'll be good to go, you know? I think, I feel like, I don't know why I didn't have her use that before that combat, but look like she came out of it like totally unscathed. Good for her. 
it's it's always it's always nice to come out of a, to come out of an encounter without without any damage, right? Did you always hate that player that like that like their character is is just always coming out of ev every combat unscathed whenever you're playing like with a pen and paper group? That's that's the one the one player that everyone just absolutely despises. Oh, oh my gosh, do you have any more healing spells? Because, like, Loriana over here in in her super nifty red dragon robes is, like, is, like, dying. She's not dying, but, like, she's not doing as well as she could be. Like, it's so nifty. The, look at those those robes are so ornate. Yeah, and she's got pretty red hair, and like everything about her is just red. And she's like everywhere she's goes, she's like she's like, hey, did you know that like I can breathe fire? And they're like, yeah, we heard you the first five times. Uh oh my gosh, it's like there's a chest over here. It's not locked or anything. Okay, so like... There's a helmet, I guess I could use that and like... Oh my gosh, it's just there's so much not room for, for carrying things. I feel like Jahira has some room. So she can't wear any metal armor because she's a druid. Oh wait, but she's a fighter druid so she can. I don't understand how that works. Like, how does being a fighter do it? How does that, like, because I felt as though the wearing only leather armors was, like, had something to do with, with their nature magic or something like that. At the same time, though, that would seem to make it a bit weird that, that like, she can use a, a metal shield, you know, as, as, like... As opposed to a wooden shield, I guess, being the only type of shield that she could use. But, like, this this is a mage scroll. Oh my gosh, it's Grease. It's that spell that, like, I chose not to get. It's, it's that spell I totally chose, like, like not to memorize. I'm going to go ahead and, and scribe it to my spellbook if I can. Yeah, well, now, now I have it. What are these? Acorns. These are the Dryad's magical acorns that you've obtained off of the Durgar leader, Iliage. There's a Dryad who has magical acorns, or needs magical acorns, or uh, apparently since they're not with a Dryad at the moment, I have them. So I guess I'll, I'll probably be trading these for something in a minute. Oh, uh, okay, so... Can give this helmet to someone else. I'm gonna go ahead and give it to to Jahira. It's one of those ones with wings on it. Look at that. Isn't it so pretty? Look at that pretty helmet. I'm gonna go ahead and like start dumping off some some more of this leather armor onto Jahira. That's cool if she can wear chainmail, but like I hope it doesn't. I hope it doesn't do a thing where it's like oh you can't use your druid spells now. Oh, it doesn't. Cool. So, I guess she's just a slightly overpowered druid. Oh, no, but, like, she can't... Oh, no, she's carrying too much. It's too heavy. I guess I'm gonna have to, like, start pawning some of this stuff off on the other people. L'Oreal, I can carry some of it. I feel like in Baldur's Gate, they give, like, a percentage of chance of failure for, like, trying to spell cast with armor on, so, like, with, like, Leandra, I'm not sure if, like, I guess I feel like giving her, um... <laughs> giving her leather armor, I guess that may that may give her like a ten percent failure chance. Or I think that's third edition. I feel like I feel like in second edition it just completely deactivates uh, a character's ability to even. Oh, look, it's too heavy. 
I feel like it just deactivates a, a character's ability to to even cast spells at all. So I guess like in Neverwhere Nights, I think in, in that game that was the one where it would just be like, oh, you suffer this percentage chance of your spells not being successfully cast. It's just tables just covered in in armor and weapons. I guess it is a smithy after all. Oh gosh, you can't you can't carry all that. It's too heavy. What about you? Yeah, Minsk is like Minsk is super into into ass kicking. You point, I, I guess like uh I feel like I'm just, I'm filling up my inventory with whatever I feel are the most, like, cost, uh, effective things to sell. Except for, like, she's hardly carrying anything because she can hardly carry anything. Uh, and just sort of... I can't, I can't give them much more to carry because it's just, it's too heavy. Maybe I'll start finding scrolls or, like, light things in a minute, but, like, I feel like this way I can just, you know, if it comes to a point where it looks like there's a better option, I can, I can toss a few things if I absolutely have to. I feel like she could definitely use these throwing knives. They, they would do a good job of, of helping to keep her, like, in the, in the, back of a fight as opposed to like in the front of it although I feel like her dragon's breath ability makes putting her in the front every now and then kind of like just a part of her fighting style I don't know what Minsk is on about do I want to open that door behind it there could be like goodies and surprises and like your supply of turtle wax or the polar bear from lost oh fuck shit i i apparently saw that trap as soon as it went off i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and reload from like from like before i set that trap off because i can so ugh. Okay, I'm gonna send Imoen around this corner before I send anyone else. Because because she can she can see the trap and then and then like disarm it. Hopefully anyway. She's supposed to be able to. She saw it last time. There there we go. Wasn't there, wasn't there more than that? I feel like there was more than that. I guess not, maybe though. Okay. I'm gonna just go, go, go ahead and take everyone here. I feel like I'm gonna have to go through this door at some point, so I may as well. Oh, it's locked. Does it, does it need a special fucking key to use this? Every damn door. Yeah, oh gosh, it has no visible lock or handle and you can't see the budget. However, the floor has an odd-shaped uh, recess in it. It looks as if a statue or figurine could fit within. Okay, so I guess this is some, this is some like Bruce Wayne style shit and I have to go get a, a statuette to, to put in this alcove in order to open this door. Our captor is is on some seriously fancy shit, y'all. Oh, what's this? What is this? What is that? That's a cambion. That's like that's like a half demon. That's like that's like what you get when a human and a demon do a or a human and a devil rather. Oh my gosh! So like. Hmm. I bet anything if I if I mess with this, it's gonna free the the cambion and I'll have to fight it. 
I can deal with that, but I'm gonna summon a spider and and use ghost armor if I can first. And and maybe and maybe use flame blade. Cause I don't know if Flame Blade is necessarily the best idea because I don't know that, um, I feel like it can be on my absent Flame Resistance as like, as like a, a type of devil, but like, I guess you never know. You're too far away to use that. Pushing on the lever of the machine seems to excite the demon that stands in the circle. The magic barrier that surrounds it weakens. Visibly, if the wheel is turned further, you expect the magic might disappear altogether. Yep. So, all I have to do is just keep turning. You push the lever in the room, begins to hum the magic barrier around the demon disappears. The fiend snarls and gnashes his teeth. Okay, so it's showtime. I have a blur. I'm going to cast that real quick before this guy like just goes to town on me and rips me a new butthole. Uh, I guess I can cast Doom on him? That seems just a little bit, you know, it seems like a slightly inadequate measure, but whatever. I'm going to go send... Leandra into melee against him because that's what she does best with with her her two long swords there just being a ridiculous sword lady and and Loriana can can cast magic missile and hopefully yeah this is see this guy he's he's not so tough he's he's already badly injured like look at that Gonna cast uh, another magic missile at him, and and he's he's almost dead. He's he's so about to be completely dead. Oh fuck! And like she is, she she needs to get out of there. She needs one of these potions, and she needs to get the fuck out of there. She needs to make like a tree and get the fuck out of there. Oh, her inventory's full. Snap! I can't. I can't hand her anything while her inventory's full. But she needs. She needs these potions so super duper desperately. She has no armor because she can't cast spells while she's wearing it. But that's like the funny thing is that like of course right now, well she has this spell ghost armor on. Oh, she she automatically drank another potion. How how wonderful of you! I guess I guess she'll have to just keep pressing on then next time. Until then, be your most beautiful you.